Thompson. I'm here with Tom High School. I'm the media service uh, director of media services here at the University of Rio Grande. Uh, today we're going to talk about what are we going to talk about? Well, this is going to be what you do when you're an owner, you have a, a dog that's had no training, you haven't had any particular background in training, but you want to do something with your dog and you want to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is a way to do that that uh, is, is easy. Now, we're, this, the illustration here is with a real challenging dog, quite active, quite anxious and conflicted and so forth. So what you see me doing here with this dog is actually very much easier to do with an average dog. Uh, okay, so I, I work, I don't necessarily work, but uh, I volunteer at the shelter. I do photography to help animals find homes. And a lot of these things can be uh, headed off by decent training. Uh, some of the dogs come in because maybe they've tore things up around the house. Uh, some of it, they may be high energy dogs that uh, maybe cause problems. And part of that, you, what you can do is uh, exercise your dogs more. Mm -hmm. And training is a large part in having a, a good relationship with a dog. So that's part of the reason for having this show today. This is kind of training 101 or how to get started without a lot of training for yourself. Right. So this is one thing that you've learned. It's called SMART. Yeah, it's SMART. And a little bit about me. I, was, I worked for 30 years as a clinical psychologist. I have a PhD from, in clinical psych from Purdue University. But uh, having retired, uh, I trained to work with uh, dogs and other animals through the Karen Pryor Academy for Animal Training, um, a certified training partner with uh, them, and you have to pass some pretty rigorous requirements to make that cut. Anyway, um, so what's, so what's it, easier to deal with, people or, or dogs? Well, if, if all you had to do was train dogs, then that's easier. Right? <laughs> when you yes, this is like, this is, uh, the, the dancing analogy is not far off. You're, you're teaching at the same time you're teaching a dog, you're teaching a person, and they have, right. a, they have a back and forth, they have a partnership. There's a lead and a follow. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a good deal of what matters is giving people effective ways to be effective, positive leaders uh, with their dogs. And that way you end up with a confident animal that wants to be with you, and um, you're giving them good guidance, you're giving them good structure and leadership because um, you want to be a good role model. Uh, I don't think a lot of this training, there are some people that might like it, but uh, negative reinforcement. This is more of a positive reinforcement type of training. Yeah, and it's, and it's very, very effective. And I, I think that watching this video with this little dog will be, um, I think, interesting for a lot of people. Well, over the course of uh, the year here, we're going to be talking about a variety of topics. And uh, I have to put my glasses on yeah. <laughs> to see. Uh, I'll, I'll look at them. Dog to dog play and problem signals. So when you've got dogs are out at the dog park or they're you know with a neighbor's dog or something like that, when's it going okay and when's it time to step in and go okay, let's step back and calm down here a little bit or let's intervene. Uh, dogs and children. That's a good topic. Uh, greeting people and other dogs when you're on walks. Uh, enjoying walking with your dog. Uh, loose leash walking. Um, instead of the dog walking you, uh, dogs that are reactive, um, fears of various kind, thunderstorms, separation anxiety. Um, here are some other the topics here. We went over those earlier. Uh, do dogs have feelings? I know what I think. Uh, Me too. The guilty look, what does it mean? Dog and human communication. Uh, dog stress signals. This might be a very important one to have uh, so that you can accommodate your dog, or if it's giving some warning signals uh, of being stressed out, it may bite. You're, you're right. Sometimes they're trying very, very hard to communicate with us, and, and um, we've got to see what they're trying to say. So with dogs, you end up uh, um, um, listening with your eyes a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, how do dogs learn, and how can we teach them? Dog sports and scenting activities, uh, what kind of treats and rewards are good to use, uh, treat bags, uh, clickers, 
and house training and how you should go about adopting a shelter or rescue animal because uh, they may have been sitting in the, the shelter for quite a while in a little run. Right. And so they get bad habits. Mm hmm So, or coming from a, a place where they may have been abused. Could be. You know, being at the shelter, I've seen a lot of dogs that are very shy and meek and uh, you know, they, they'll all just low crawl on the ground mm -hmm. because they're so submissive. And yeah bringing that their confidence back out is very yeah, rewarding it is it is okay so you said you brought a, a video along i have a video that shows more or less how this training technique works right uh, essentially this is uh from a, some a, a trainer named kathy sadow she wrote a book uh plenty in life is free and the essence of this technique on a day-to-day -day <laughs> basis is uh put 50 treats around the house in a cup or uh, in a little treat bag or in your pocket. And during the course of your day, when you see your dog doing something that you uh, are glad to see them doing, then mark it, say, yep, yes, give a click, then deliver the treat to the dog, and that will ingrain that behavior over time with repetition, and it's no big deal, because you're just going about your day, and you're n learning to notice uh, behaviors that you like. Uh, and for the dog, it's a win-win, because if the dog's doing it, the behavior works for the dog, so the dog is going like, oh, you like it when I do this, that, or the other, we're good. Yeah, so uh, it's a way to, and then as you, as you build up those positive kinds of behaviors, then that sort of pushes some of the problem behaviors back, because when the dog's doing A, he's not, he or she's not doing B. So, right. Yeah. So we can watch that video. You got, you don't have TriCaster up. See a behavior you want, mark with a click. <laughs> Reward the behavior with a treat, affection, or activity. Yes. Good dog. In the first minute, he jumped 15 times, nipped or snapped five times, and grabbed my leg twice. Hello, Andy. How you doing? Woo! Yeah. Hello. Hello, guy. I know you're happy to see me, aren't you? What a good boy. What a good boy. Easy. Good boy. Good boy. Oops. Good. All right. Yeah, I know. You're... You're happy snapping there, aren't you? Hi, right, Andy, sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. Up, sit. Sit. Good. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. Good talk. Good boy. Good boy. 
Good dog, take it off. Easy. Whoops. Good. Up. Stay. 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 Sit. Good. Stay. Good. Nice kiss. Nice kiss. You're getting all this. Yeah. This is Hello. Typical Andy. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Typical Andy. Uh, Easy. Sit. 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 Okay. Get up here. Good. Sit. Good. Kisses. Good kiss. Good kisses. Oops. Good kisses. Good kisses. Kisses. Good. Maybe. Oh, what a good boy. Yeah. Okay, so what we're seeing are, as far as some rewardable behaviors, he is staying down at times. He made eye contact with you. He went there and sat on his own. He gives me kisses. Um, he, good boy. Kiss. Easy. Sit. Good. Well, there, Good like down. that was one. Yes. Right? He laid down. Good. 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 Give me kisses. Good. So, currently, be rewarding anything other than hair snapping yeah. and jumping on my leg. Yeah, that's what we don't want to reward. Right? Yeah. Good. And right there, he went over there. Good boy. So I think we've seen quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, that's good. 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 Good boy. And so I've given him social rewards and attention. You know, trying to focus on times when he's Doing something. Doing something. Do. Uh, yeah, yeah, interacting, you know, uh, slightly more calmly. And now, we're going to go for marking rewardable behaviors. Oh, good. Yeah, that was good. He, he stayed down. He didn't jump up on him. Okay. There we go. All right. Now you're sure. Did I go Maggie out of the way? I'm fine. Okay. Sit. Maggie. 
Mags. Good. Mags. Maggie. Here, Mags. Now you're getting to But yeah, this is Andy with a stranger in the house. Because even though he knew you when you came in, it's still he responded to you. Like, good boy. Easy. Down. Kisses. Good. Good. Good job. Okay. Yeah, it's good. So uh, anyway, it's a, it's it's a, technically speaking, it's a conditioned reinforcer. Money is a conditioned reinforcer. You know, money is itself just a piece of paper or a piece of metal, but it predicts exchange for something we want. And so rewards in this case are things that the dog likes. The dog, if the dog's food oriented, then treats work well. If they are toy oriented, you throw their ball or get their tug or also uh, click now you get to go outside. Uh, click now I put your leash, your, uh, leash on you because that means we're going to get to go outside, all that sort of stuff. So before you use a clicker, you just sit down with them not really training, you're training to use a clicker. You go click, treat, click, right. treat, click, treat. Those are yeah, exactly right. And the way you did it is, is the way it goes. There are two separate movements. If I go, here's what doesn't work. Click, treat, all right. If I'm doing click and then delivering money, what you're going to look at is the money in my hands. If I'm delivering food or bringing, your, bringing a leash, what you're going to look at is the end result you want. So what you want is the clicker becomes, a click becomes a predictor. Something good is on the way. So click, deliver. Click, deliver. And then the click itself, the dog starts listening for the click and that means that it's, it's working for that click. And you could be more immediate with those rewards because giving a treat, you know, with a highly reactive dog like that was, it's very quick. His butt hits the floor for like one second. You have to tell him that's good in one second. Exactly. And you don't have time to like for him to turn around and give him a treat. Right. So, so you the click marks that just that that you second can pinpoint or spin, those pinpoint. Reactive. Yeah. Yeah, and also if you if you you know you don't have to use a clicker or you can use a snapple lid pop, you know that works. Yeah. Just press that out a little bit, um, uh, or you can say yes, yep, whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are it, it, the briefer and clearer it is, the better, and that works. So yes, yep, click any of those. Take your pick. So first, do the clicker training to get it associated with the treat, and then second, just wait for the right behavior to mm -hmm. reward right and yeah. you're not uh, punishing for the wrong 
things, you're you're rewarding for the right things. Right, and as you saw in this video, the dog was jumping all around the place and and anxiously nipping, and and I was delivering treats uh, by tossing him because when he was taking tre treats, he was so anxious that he was, you know catching part of my fingers there, no damage, but, you know, taking the treats hard. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, you, 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 you just uh, take the, you just, well, you associate yes, yep, mm -hmm. whatever, with a good result. And so then that, 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 that. So then that, they start working f towards that. They work for the yes, work for the yep, work for the click. Mm -hmm. And then that, as you say, pinpoints that exact point pinpoints that exact behavior and especially with a really really active dog like this you can catch that second or split second when it's sitting on the floor as opposed to you know three-fourths of a second later it's jumped up so yeah yeah and pinpointing it might be better because it's you could just be throwing treats on the floor and I don't know what yeah. Why they're coming? Yeah, right. You're just glad that they're there, <laughs> right? Right. Yay, treats. Yeah, yeah. And so this is this is an earning kind of program. In other words, it's not here. Come here, and I'll give you a treat, and you're showing them the treat, and saying, "Oh, you you don't want to come out? Well, oh, here, come here. I've got a treat for you. Now, will you come out?" It's it's like, okay, you sat, click, or yes, yep, and that earns you a treat. So it's an earning rather than bribing approach. So it's right. educational and structured and providing leadership and guidance that way instead of bribery. Right. Yeah. And uh, with my burners, teaching shake was very easy because one of their, uh, just their behaviors, when they're a little nervous, they'll put their, their paw up. Uh huh. So you just wait for them to do that. And it's like, then you just have to associate shake with the paw, yeah. and you give him a treat. There we go. And that's what we're getting here with, is what you're doing, what you did there, and what we're doing here is, I, well, I, 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 I gave him, he, he knew sit, so I, I gave him sit so he could be successful because he was all over the place. Um, now, why did this person want to come to you for treat? Oh, I, I, she, he's a friend of mine, and, and, and um, I, I asked if I could go over there and, and work with this dog. For I wasn't this. sure if it was this a is, problem dog. No, well, yeah, he, he is. I mean, when this dog is, is, when people come to their house, they have this dog in a kennel. This dog does not greet people. So me coming to the house and the dog coming out was, in, with this was basically uh, the first uh, that they've done that in some while because uh, the, they, they started putting him in a kennel after he nipped somebody on the, on the calf. Right. And so, uh, you know, again, no great damage, but at the same time, they knew they had to manage the situation to uh, avoid problems. So this was a, this was a demonstration and uh, worked out well. Uh, have you seen any good progress since? Well, I'm, this I'm was, sure this was last Saturday. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they would have to follow up with yeah, other right. people and yeah. everything. Yeah, but I, he, was, he was very encouraged to see uh, what... what 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 this dog Andy could do instead of as he said just going nuts right. you know so yeah, yeah and this is very important to do as far as training your dog uh, to have good manners and whenever you adopt a dog and and keeping a dog everything I have huge dogs so they are big how many 100 125 yeah so they're not extremely large but everybody else thinks they're like crazy big right which I think they're just yeah. right yeah anyway training your dogs and you have a puppy now right. that you just got from the she from may the pound right she may appear on the show I'm not sure yeah I'd like that but uh, uh, it gets more important for you to have a well-mannered dog the bigger the dog gets mm -hmm. a little nip from a chihuahua might hurt a little bit mm -hmm. a nip from one of my guys yeah, you might be going to the hospital. Yeah, so and, and as I think you were talking about earlier, behavior problems are fatal for more dogs than I think one of a vet was saying than the top four dog diseases combined. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. And all it takes is a little training, which is why we're doing these shows. Yeah, to help you be successful and have well mannered, well mannered animals. Yeah, look forward to that. And um, this is the kind of thing that uh, when we also involving our children, when you learn how to teach, 
you're, you're learning something about empathy for another creature. You're learning how to set positive goals. And when there's a problem, you kind of think, the first thing you think is, okay, what is I want this dog to be doing instead? You know, and then you train for that behavior in that situation rather than trying to suppress the problem behavior. With if there's a problem behavior, you try to manage that so it creates some environmental situation so the dog's not going to be jumping up. Maybe you have the leash on or something, or it's behind a barrier. And I'm all for positive reinforcement because if you have a reactive or shy or otherwise a, a unbalanced dog, this is the best way to do it. Yeah. So. Thanks for coming on the show, and thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next month. Thank you.